What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the site, well, you've come to the right place. By now, I'm sure you've all heard of the Texas abortion ban. Essentially, it's a law enacted that forbids abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. I'm not one to get into politics, but if you really want to know my opinion, I'm a Roman Catholic, so should be pretty obvious. The thing is, abortion is a very divisive issue. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. You really can't come to a middle ground on it. On one hand, you have people who believe it's their right to get one, and by taking that right away, you are taking away their freedom. On the other hand, people interpret it as murder, taking away the chance to live from an innocent child. My opinion, I think both sides have oversimplified views on the matter. They don't see nuance or complexity to it. I think there's a lot more to this whole thing than you're murdering children or you're taking away my rights. Again, I really do hate the subject. The nature of it means that you really can't compromise. You guys might know about a company called Tripwire, folks behind a lot of well-known games such as Killing Floor, Rising Storm, and Chivalry. Well, the now former CEO of the company posted a tweet about the matter. Proud of U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often. Yet, with so many vocal peers on the other side of the issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. Nah, I don't know, I've always hailed the opinion that when public figures and celebrities push politics onto their following, it's just kinda, I don't know, off-putting I suppose. I don't really like it. But if we're going off the tweet and the tweet alone, I don't see what's wrong with it. He's saying that he's pro-life and he agrees with a bill that supports those beliefs. He's not trying to get other people to agree with him or encouraging states to follow suit, he's just simply stating where he stands on the matter. But of course, Twitter didn't take too kindly to it. Jesus man, really? You are all about this messed up Texas bounty law that pushes us closer to some kind of Gilead dystopian religious state? Really? I mean, how can anyone be proud of claiming dominion over a woman's personal freedoms? You're proud of the state dictating rape victims and incested girls to carry a pregnancy for nine months? Congratulations on being brave enough to come out as part of the majority of men who are hostile to women and their autonomy. You fit right in your industry. Proud of the gaming community condemning you for supporting a law that controls women's reproductive rights. As a reviewer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the correct side of the issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as pro-choice. By the way, I like how this guy talks about his image as a game reviewer. Dude has 136 subscribers. Dude, get off your high horse. I reiterate my earlier point. These are people who just don't see nuance to the situation. They think this whole debacle is a lot more simple than what it really is. It's a one-way street to them. You're either pro-choice or you hate women and think their rights should be stripped from them. There's more to the other side, but well, fooey for them. So this whole thing caused a lot of fallout. A lot of companies that Tripwire worked with seem to be distancing themselves from the company, including Shipwright Studios who canceled their contracts with the company. While your politics are your own, the moment you make them a matter of public discourse, you entangle all of those working for and with you. We have worked closely alongside the talented and passionate developers at Tripwire and your partners for the last three years. We know it is difficult for employees to speak up or act out in these scenarios, and they may not feel comfortable to speak their minds. It is regrettable, but we feel it would be doing ourselves, your employees, your partners, and the industry as a whole a disservice to allow this pattern to continue without comment. We started Shipwright with the idea that it was finally time to put our money where our mouth is. We cannot, in good conscience, continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our existing contracts effective immediately. I don't got too much to say about the statement, but in my opinion, it's a cheap PR move. Just a way for them to morally grandstand a atop their high horse with their customers and partners in outrage. Tripwire released a statement regarding the tweet. Tripwire points new interim CEO Alan Wilson as company moves forward. Comments given by John Gibson are of his own opinion and do not reflect those of Tripwire Interactive as a company. His comments disregarded the values of our whole team and much of our broader community. Our leadership team at Tripwire are deeply sorry and are unified in our commitment to take swift action and to foster a more positive environment. Effective immediately, John Gibson has stepped down as CEO of Tripwire Interactive. Co-founding member and current vice president Alan Wilson will take over as interim CEO. Alan has been with the company since its formation in 2005 and is an active lead in both the studio's business and developmental affairs. Allen will work with the rest of Tripwire leadership team to take steps with employees and partners to address their concerns, including executing a company-wide town hall meeting and promoting open dialogue with Tripwire leadership and all employees. His understanding of both the company's culture and creative vision of our games will carry the team to this transition, with full support from other Tripwire leaders. So what you can essentially take away from this is that Mr. Gibson is no longer the CEO. 
I'm not sure if he really stepped down voluntarily or was fired, it's not really clear, but in any case, the company distanced themselves from him. Now I'll say this, Gibson really should have saw this coming. I mean, making a statement like this, especially on a site that's shown itself to be very left-leaning and liberal, not only, but companies are obsessed with PR, so I mean, really, what did you expect? That being said, I don't like the look of this. To me, this says that if you have a belief that's different from the sentiment of the general population, or, you know, a loud minority, which that's what Twitter is, you know, a loud minority, well, your career could be ruined, though arguably it's been happening for a while now. You know, it seems that something these statements come back to is that by making these sorts of political statements, you're entangling your employees and partners, you're associating them with your statements, and that's kind of the whole thing with this debacle. But it's like, would they feel the same way if Gibson came out as pro-choice? Would you still be against him making these sorts of statements on account of entangling employees and associates? Would they still cut ties with him then? I honestly don't think so. All this is being done because he holds in open opinion that is unpopular on Twitter. Interestingly, people appear to be just as mad on YouTube, but for the opposite reason. People are upset for the decision to let Gibson go for his beliefs and are critical for their participation in what they believe to be cancel culture. Many of Tripwire's videos have a less than savory like to dislike ratio, and many comments voicing disdain for the situation. Obviously, PR on Twitter is probably worth more than PR on YouTube, but it's interesting nevertheless. It seems that a lot of pro-choicists are still upset with Tripwire and many have moved to boycott their company, which is funny to me. I mean, they literally fired the person that made you upset. What more could you possibly want? Honestly, it's just another reason to never bend the knee. No matter how much you try to solve and compromise, people will always be upset. On the other side, a lot of people are upset with the company for firing Gibson because they see it as them participating in cancel culture. So ultimately, no one's happy. Everyone loses. And, you know, at the end of it all, you see a lot of people saying, Oh, well, this ain't cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Well, you'd better hope that you stay on the correct side of politics till the end of time, because if you're unlucky, this so-called consequence culture will turn around and bite you in the hua. It's only a matter of time before you reap what you sow. Hey. That's what I call consequence culture. In my opinion, I think people are getting too upset than what it's worth. If you're gonna bitch and moan about a Christian having pro-life sentiment, honestly, I just think you're deranged. Overall, the situation's a mess, and just another one to add to the pile of the madness that is cancel culture. That's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you, thank you very much.